Good morning. I'm going to steal a little bit of the bishop's thunder and wish you a happy Easter. Uh, next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday, a special day to receive grace and favor from God. The 11 o'clock Mass will conclude with Eucharistic adoration until the time of the Divine Mercy Chaplet and Benediction, which will start at 2 o'clock. The Sacrament of Penance will also be available beginning at 1 o'clock. God has promised full remission of all punishment due to sin by partaking in this celebration of mercy. So please join us. And again, happy Easter. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen, as he said, so we rejoice and are glad. With confidence in his saving love for us, we prepare now for these sacred mysteries this Easter day. Lord Jesus, Son of the risen God, you are anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and power. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, risen Son of God, you are the Paschal Lamb who redeems us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you will come again to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, 
Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. made. Let us rejoice and be glad. <clears throat> this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, Seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For he did, they did not yet understand the scripture, and that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. An editor of a Catholic newspaper, not our North Country Catholic, recently wrote that there's a, a kind of masochistic delight that more than a few Christians seem to take in retelling the failings of the church. It's a kind of vanity. This belief that we must, we must live in the worst of times when the church's witness has never seemed so weak and uncertain. The odds are pretty good that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, it's likely that someone, well, somebody's complaining about our vocation shortage, low mass attendance, the religious indifference of many, the scandals, the failings of our church leaders, or some other symptom of our secular age. And this kind of glass half empty approach to our Catholic lives seems oddly consoling to those who choose to linger on such symptoms. The implication being that they are above all that. They are the worthy remnant. Well, the irony is that when Catholics, myself included, bemoan the horrors of this age, we too often provide a singularly unappealing face of Catholicism. Pinched, worried, more eager to talk about the sins of others than the salvation won for them. You know the folks, you swear to God their face would crack if they smiled. With such a sentiment is the church without Easter. This mentality betrays a heart unchanged by the great sacrifice of Good Friday and the redemption confirmed for us today, Easter. Such is a heart untouched by the joy of salvation, untransformed by the sacrificial love 
of the sinless lamb who died for our sins. What is lacking in so much of our Christian witness today is hope and joy. And we lack this joy if we have not allowed ourselves to be truly transformed by our Redeemer God from the inside out. Now that certainly doesn't mean that we minimize the terrible evil, injustice, and suffering that remain in our world and all the real issues that we need to be serious about addressing. But it does place them in the proper context. I mean, think of one of the most, I think, one of the most powerful witnesses of the faith in our era. Think of Saint Mother Teresa. What characterized her was not a message of condemnation. She did not waste her time recounting all the ways that people were failing. Instead, she was personally transformed by an intimate encounter with Jesus Christ. And she ministered to the most hurting and despised of humanity with great joy because of that personal relationship, because of that personal encounter that she experienced with God. And she attracted people of every faith, or no faith at all, because she radiated God's love for them. And one doesn't hear of any vocations shortage in her religious order. People saw the Easter promise in her. And other saints were similarly transformed. They accepted hardship. They accepted even martyrdom with the same sense of joy. So a question we might reflect upon is, do we radiate a trust in God that others can see. In our most difficult moments, are we an Easter people? Joy is a hallmark of our encounter with the risen Christ. For we who have been lost have been found. You know, our age is not so different from every other age. The sins are not new. The shortcomings are not original. The suffering is no more painful than in times gone by. And our responsibility as Catholic Christians is no different either. We are to live in the truth, to care for the weak, to bring aid to the sick, to visit the prisoners, to comfort the dying. We are to bring hope to the despairing and friendship to the lonely. And we are to do all of this with joy because we are Christ-led, Christ-fed, and so hope-filled. My sisters and brothers, Easter 2024, let us kneel before our risen Lord and ask him to transform our hearts so that all who see us see him in us. I pray, dear Jesus, help me to spread your fragrance everywhere I go. Flood my soul with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that my life may only be a radiance 
of yours. Shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel your presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Stay with me, and then I shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be a light to others. The light, O oh Jesus, will be all from you. None of it will be mine. It will be you shining on others through me. Gracious God, let us praise you in the way that you love best, by shining on those around us. My sisters and brothers, let us joyfully celebrate Christ's victory over sin and death. And let us radiate this joy to a troubled world, one person at a time. May God be praised forever. May God be praised. Let us take a few moments to reflect upon the word of God proclaimed to us this morning. My sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Supper, we bring all our prayers before the Lord of life. For the church throughout the world, that each member of the body of Christ may rejoice in the Lord's resurrection and witness to his saving presence in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Terry, and all who guide the church, fill them with the joy of the gospel and refresh them with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For every nation and people on this holy Easter day, May the light who is Christ shine in every heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the abiding peace of the risen Christ to dwell among us, and for the people of Ukraine, the Holy Land, Haiti, Sudan, and every place torn by violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not believe, for those who doubt, and those who despair, Renew in them the hope born of the resurrection and draw them to your saving power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have received the Easter sacraments, for their sponsors and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations among us and from our own families, that the good news of salvation may always be proclaimed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Shaber and the Church in Latakia, that the risen Christ may give them new courage and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this season of new life, we pray for all expectant parents and all those who have recently been blessed with a child, that all people may reverence this gift of life from conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and their eternal happiness, May they be welcomed to heaven by the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the gift of our Redeemer, Jesus the Lord. Hear all our prayers brought to you in his holy name, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the King of heaven, the glorious King. O'er death today rose triumphing. Alleluia. 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 That Easter morn at break of day, the faithful women went their way to seek the tomb where Jesus lay. Alleluia! 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 Alleluia!
pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith we proclaim your death O Lord and profess your resurrection until you Again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Terry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us share with one another a sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. 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 Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May Almighty God be with you and bless you. God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for praying with us. Just wanted to say a couple of words of, of gratitude first to Christine and Mark who have been so supportive of our music ministry here at the cathedral, particularly during these holy days. They put in some extra time, and we're so grateful for their um, music ministry here, and particularly during these Easter seasons. I want to thank our deacons who are uh, ever ready and ever present to assist at the sanctuary, so I'm very grateful to our deacons. You know, this is a rather large space to decorate in. Every year, the staff here, led by Donna Extel, does a super job in decorating this sacred space. So, uh, shout out to, to Donna and her team for doing such a, a wonderful uh, ministry here at the cathedral. And last but not least, we want to say thank you to the, uh, to the guy who runs it all, uh, Father Morgan and, uh, and Father Jude and Father Shirtliff for all of their work and and making this such a welcoming, such a beautiful parish family here at the cathedral. So thank you, Father Morgan. A blessed Easter to you, to all those who are live streaming with us today, those who are with us on the radio, and to all of your loved ones. May this Easter season be a, a special time of eternal joy for each and every one of you. Enjoy the day, everybody. silence in a bit of fear and a grief. Three days we clung together where he had washed our feet.
Thank you for joining us this morning for our weekly broadcast of the 8 a.m. Mass from St. Mary's Cathedral. It is the prayer of our staff and parishioners that you have found this time of prayer refreshing for your mind and soul, and that through the consolation of the Holy Spirit, your faith and trust in God may grow ever deeper. We wish you a very, very wonderful Easter and uh, Sunday of this liturgical year. And uh, with that, I will uh, return this uh, broadcast back to the, the uh, radio announcer. <laughs>